Welcome back everybody to It Resolves and the Saturday guest slot. I am very happy today to be presenting to you Symphoneers Gaming. If you have not heard of Symphoneers, you absolutely need to go over to his channel, subscribe to him, enjoy the decks that he puts together. He is a very, very technical player, a very skilled player, and you have certainly a lot to learn from his channel. So I encourage you to watch, enjoy, make sure you go subscribe afterwards, and thank you so much to Symphoneers for sharing this video. Hi, I'm Symphoneers, and a big thank you to everyone at It Resolves for inviting me onto the channel today to show off a new deck. Um, if you're unfamiliar with my videos, I tend to focus on kind of proactive or punchy brews, usually for standard for like ranking up to mythic with, although I do branch out into other formats and things, like lately I've been doing some videos on budget explorer decks, just because I think that's kind of a fun, low-stakes way to engage with that format right now. Anyway, the deck in front of us today was very much inspired by the recent ladder reset and just wanting a kind of fresh, new build of aggro to climb to Mythic with. Um, and I ran across Shakedown Heavy and kind of thought, hey, we know this can do some kind of cheaty, weird things with fight rigging, but what does it look like in a more functional or kind of more fair aggro deck? Uh, so, we are kind of built around doing that. Um, to facilitate that goal, we have four Reckless Storm Seekers and four Rabbit Batteries to give it haste. This means that the Shakedown Heavy's kind of blackmail text is online. Ideally, the turn it hits the table, which is great for us. Uh, to further get value out of playing Shakedown Heavies, we are running three Arnie Broken Brows. Now, Arnie is handy because his boast ability sets his power to be the highest thing on the field by one point. So if we have a Shakedown Heavy on the field, even if the opponent pays to untap it and, uh, you know, to not get hit by it, uh, Arnie will still be a 7-3 and, ooh, 7-3s kill people fast. You love to see it. Uh, I mentioned the Storm Seekers. Uh, the rest of the deck is kind of just really efficient Rakdos threats. So we are running a full playset of Blood Tithe Harvesters. These can be removal for the deck or some kind of backup removal, but often we're just going to be beating in with the 3-2. Uh, we do have some dedicated removal in Royal Eruption, Blood Chief's Thirst, Raven Feeblement, um, Play With Fire. Just kind of a weird spread of stuff that's fast, efficient removal we can use to deal with opposing aggro decks. And uh, yeah, Royal Eruption in particular, handy for getting... Uh, just for its ability to go to face and burn out the opponent. We do have a full playset of Blade of the Onis as well. Basically just a 3-1 menace in the list. It kind of sucks that it's a mythic because that's what it is in, you know, just a 3-1 menace in 95% of games. You do occasionally use the reconfigurability. It's good to keep in mind that it's like double black pips and you can toss it on a rabbit battery to have a haste menace 5-5. Five five but that does not happen a whole lot. Um, aside from all that stuff, we are running a full playset of both Kamana Faces Kakazan and Okiba Reckoner Raid. They're just enormously efficient one-drops that can really pressure the opponent. Um, Kumano, I think, is kind of proven at this point. Okiba, well, it's not as frequently played as Kumano Faces Kakazan. It's nearly as efficient or nearly as good, and it does actually fit into the kind of broader sub-theme of just menace in the deck. Between Okiba Reckoner Raid, Blade of the Oni, and Shakedown Heavy, we have a lot of menace threats, so one of this deck's strengths is actually its kind of evasion, or making blocks just absolutely awful for your opponent. Um, and yeah, I think that about covers the deck. Nothing too fancy in the mana base, just some Shatter Skull Smashings, um, Manlands, and, you know, Takanumas and stuff. Uh, yeah, if you like the deck tech, like the video, maybe consider stopping by my channel and subscribing. Um, thank you, and with all that YouTuber stuff out of the way, let's get on to some gameplay. Um, pretty decent hand we're on the play, which is great. Duplicate Arnie's is a little bit awkward, um, we... I wish Arnie wasn't legendary, it would be so nice to be able to run the four of without issue. But two of them is okay, some mulligans from our opponent, which is... encouraging. Um, yeah, we are missing a play to do on two, but maybe we'll draw something and kind of naturally fix that situation. Rabbit battery on one is fine though, get in for some chip damage. 
red from the opponent, which suggests maybe Boros, or Boros is our most frequent aggro matchup. Uh, yeah, nothing on two kind of sucks, but we're here now. Uh, we tend to have a pretty good matchup versus Boros, just because our threats are bigger and frankly better, aside from maybe Luminar Aspirant. Um, like we can just punch through the hopeful initiate, uh, hopeful initiate here. We'll play out the Storm Seeker, get some haste happening. Um, yeah, we might want to hold up a play with fire. We don't hate drawing a land here just because that would let us, uh, yeah, play out a threat and hold up a play with fire to hit a Luminar Casperant or something. So we do get to do that. We also get the flip to Knight, which is nice. Um, just swing in with everyone. We can do the Arnie Taunt here to leverage the Storm Charged Slasher. I think I would like to hold up the play with fire, though. We miss out on a few points of damage. Uh, not, not going for it there. But, oh, Raju, sure. So, let's see what they put the counter on. Ooh. Just a pretty safe... Mm, they're getting spicier. Okay. So this is this is nice. We can kind of blow them out here or secure lethal really comfortably. Uh, you love to see it. Good game to the opponent. Um, hmm. I like this hand. What are we doing for sequencing, though? Might try to get the Okiba Reckoner Raid down first. One nice thing with the Okiba Reckoner Raids, or the... Yeah, uh, Okiba in particular, because it, the Nozomi Road Captain doesn't have haste. Rabbit Battery's kind of secondary function in the deck is just giving uh, cards like that haste. So, yeah, I, I think I like the Okiba Reckoner Raid here. Um, we might be, if we're getting Boris Agro again... We might be doing the Royal Eruption to kill, like, a Luminar Casperant. Uh, um, very handily. Still at three toughness. Oop, pardon me, clicking on the wrong things. So we get to remove that right away, which is helpful. Um, might just go right for the Shakedown Heavy. It, it tends to be very good in the Boris Agro matchup in particular because the opponent doesn't want to get hit by it. it. It damage races them very effectively unless they've got, like, a Thundering Raiju down and stuff. Um, so it gets to be a blocker and usually trade with something, so we draw a card and kill something a lot of the time, which is just good, solid card advantage to have in an aggro deck. Anyway, the opponent's hitting the rope, trying to figure out what they're doing um i think no cavalier or anything oh that's very good for us uh relatively slow rollout for the opponent so that is nice um am i happy with the heavy we could also do blade of the oni plus rabbit battery i think i'm happy with the heavy here it's not immediately amazing, but... Oh, yeah, they do have a play with fire. So, nice to have a blocker down here just to stop stop the beatdown from happening. Hmm. So, uh, strong suspicion that they have another play with fire in hand. I'm pretty fine with this because we're two for oneing them. Uh, again, yeah. That Royal Eruption, sure, even better. Or more value out of their hand. But yeah, we two for one them and uh, kind of clear the way, get get all the cards, all the removal out of their hand, so that our Stormseeker and Rabbit Batteries are free to swing in now. Next turn, we are probably hasting in the Blade of the Oni with the Stormseeker, and oh, well, killing the Brutal Cathar first. Uh, yeah, that will be good, or that will be helpful. No haste blade of the Oni that time, um, but the opponent just kind of throws in the towel and decides they've had enough. Good game to the opponent. Oh, 
Oh boy, this hand. Um, we go first. No black mana, but our entire hand is red aside from the blade of the Oni. I would keep this six. Like if the if the blade was just not here, I would probably roll with this. Which maybe I'll get punished. We'll we'll see. Um, yeah, we're definitely hoping to just draw some black mana. Both to curve out to three and to get the Blade of the Oni down. But... If we don't... Mm, we do really want a third land, at least. Expandable Lackey. Ooh! Oh, black mana. Never punished. Um, anyway. Uh, I should probably play that post-combat and be diligent, but... We're fairly happy trading with the Lackey here. We're just getting getting cards off the field. Uh, it does give them the fish this turn, potentially, but I have no idea what they're playing, so... Um, just going to favor keeping the board clear so that all of our future stuff can swing in unimpeded. Let's get maybe Arnie down. Just because if they're going to remove something... The Stormseeker's a little bit more overall flexible. Arnie is really best with the uh, Shakedown Heavy, getting up to 7 power, although he can can be pretty big after the Storm Charged flip and stuff. Uh, or if we Voltron something together with Rabbit Batteries, but anyway, I'm, I'm kind of excited to see what the opponent's rocking, because Expandable Lackey is not something I've seen a lot of. Uh, they're doing something banned. Band control. They stick the Oni blade, or blade of the Oni, in a hole. Uh, so we are going to bolt in the Shatter Skull smashing. Stormseeker, Okiba Reckoner raid. I think that's fine. Yeah. So the main sweeper we're worried about is depopulate, which they could have on four. If they do that, we just play out the rabbit battery, drain them. Uh, they're still going to be quite low health. If they don't have a depopulate specifically, I think we're kind of good. A wandering emperor would be rough, or like that would do a good job letting them stabilize. But if they have a wandering emperor, we can still deal a good chunk of damage to them. Hmm. <laughs> The, the speed of their play makes me think that we're pretty effectively rolling out our threats, but I, I definitely, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see how they do. Sleep with the fishes. Oh, Antonio. I, I'm here for this, like, Antonio theme deck. Um, zap the fish so it can't block Arnie. That's not horrible. Oh, it's four. four mana is kind of bad. I was going to say, you know, getting a blocker and some removal, not the worst, but uh, yeah, at four mana, that's a bit rough. Anyway, good game to our opponent. We just don't even see the rest of their deck. Um, good, yeah. Ooh, exciting. Off to, oh, uh, recording a win streak, always fun. That's only black mana and a majority red hand. Let's mulligan that. Better, but a bit weird. Um, keep six, drop a land, I think is correct. Play out Haunted Ridge. I'm always... I always go back and forth as to whether to play out a tap land and double play one drops on two, or to play out an untapped land and kind of greed. Um, generally, I favor doing that type of mana rollout with Kumano Face's Kakazan in a hand, because then this means on turn three we can get the counter on the Blade of the Oni or something, instead of kind of much more awkwardly pacing that out if we're, you know, playing Okiba Reckonerate on one and we still have a tap land and. Thing, things get messy. Uh, Dimir, or sorry, Grixis from the opponent. Um, given that Shambling Gas is not really something we care about removing with the Blood Tithe Harvester, 
We'll get the Blade of the Oni down. We have the Saga Flips coming in next turn. Red mana off the top would be very helpful. If only because it would let us haste in um, the Okiba Reckoner raid. We are not drawing lands, which is a bit rough. Shakedown Heavy is potentially good, but yeah, we do need... Do kind of need some other... Well, we need a third land, anyway. So, let's see if we can get there. Etching of Kamano does mean the Ghast is going to exile, which is nice. Uh, unless they deadly dispute, of course. Luckily, we have a counter on the Blade of the Oni, so they can't minus one it. Uh, and we do connect for four points of damage. I don't really want to play out Blood Tithe Harvester, honestly. Um, this is partly that I feel I'm in a bad position with the lack of the third land, and uh, they need to do something here. So I'm expecting a Meat Hook Massacre. Yeah. Oh, I made the right call. We still might lose this game if we don't draw more land, but uh, if you ever get some nasty vibes, you know, play into them or tr trust yourself. Uh, Stormseeker on the field first, because if they don't kill this, hasting in the heavies and stuff is going to be helpful. Might lead with the Blood Tithe Harvester. Um, depends on how they play. Very concerned about Hagramalling. Okay. Yeah. Concerned about them just kind of removing it instantly. Um, unfortunately, our mana does not give us a lot of flexibility in terms of pacing out the... Uh, red pips in our hand, so I think we kind of just have to awkwardly go shake down heavy. Nah, don't don't kill it, Kate, please. Ooh, uh, we'll see how this goes. Upkeep stop from the opponent. Weird time to kill it. Just do it on your turn. Oh, we're getting magma opus, huh? Uh, okay. Well, I don't think we're gonna win this one. Uh, yeah, Magma Opus from the opponent. Getting stuck on mana for several turns. Not going so great. We have no plays. Mmm. I, who, who. Do I scoop in the guest video? <laughs> Uh, I don't think we can really do anything at this point, but there are things we can draw like Blood Chief's Thirst that do give us at least some interaction. Although, yeah, definitely, definitely not feeling good about things at the moment. Uh, Galvanic Iteration. Big score. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, well, this is happening. Blood Tithe Harvester resolves. Ooh, ah, uh, my bones. Yeah, we're... Uh, we did not draw... Oh, they have another one. Okay. Yeah, I'm... I'm just gonna scoop here, um... Good game to our opponent, uh, but yeah, they, they have more Magma Opuses in the hand. We're not doing things at this point. Uh, good games to the opponent. Mm. We're having some real awkward mana games today. Uh, no, we, we don't have enough red cards in hand to make me feel okay about missing black. Um, keep six. We're bottoming Shakedown Heavy here just because it's a three drop. Um, let's lead with black mana so we can keep a Reckonerade on one. Um, Kumano and hold up Ray of Enfeeblement on two. And then by turn three we will have hopefully actual creatures to play out, or like proper creatures to get Kumano counters on. But we can kind of keep pacing things out like this, I think. 
Mono green, an okay matchup. The rays of enfeeblement are a bit awkward here. We do draw into a blood tithe harvester, which is relatively nice. Um, get, we get the Kamano counter on it. Definitely hoping we can hit something with like a royal eruption. Oh boy. <laughs> Uh, we can probably get the old growth troll here. So, I think the thing we want to do is just to royal eruption the token to constrain their options. Um, then attack with everything. And if they block the blood tithe harvester here, which I'm kind of assuming they'll do. Mm, they just let me hit them, which is great raise. Uh, I guess we just hold up the Ray of Enfeeblement. I was going to say if they block there, we shrink their thing to make the trade and stuff better. They have an Eskis Chariot, which I don't love. Yeah, Eskis Chariot does clog up the board pretty effectively, which is suboptimal for us. Um, I am going to... Uh, uh, we'll play that out post-combat. Swing in with the team. See what they do vis-a-vis -vis chariot stuff. That has menace. So they might shuffle things around a little bit. Maximum chump blocks. Okay. Are we happy with this? We might... Hmm, oh, we might, we might get kind of weird here. Um, Ray on the cat. This could backfire horribly. Ray on the cat to keep up the etching of Kamano. The opponent's going to take a lot of damage if they... Uh, if they attack this turn. And taking out the cat means they don't have any valid copy targets for Eska's Chariot, unless they have things in hand. Um, but if they attack with the Chariot here, of course, their blocking options get more limited than they might otherwise be. Blizzard Brawl, sure. Okay. Uh, yeah, our move here might just be to simply Blood Tithe Harvest or something. Mm. Now, swing with the team. Um, they're clogging up the board, which I don't love. I think we're just kind of playing out our sagas, which have a decent a decent amount of um, like flat life drain, which is helpful. Oh, so this is going to die or trade with things anyway. Might as well control what we hit here. And just swing. We do get another point of drain with the Ukeeba Reckoner Raid. Uh, we ding them for two. Mm, can we top deck a Royal Eruption? That would be great. Um, do also kind of need a haste threat here. We can filter for things with the blood tokens. We have a turn? We have a turn. Because otherwise they can just kill us next next go round. But they are relatively shields down, which is good. Oh boy. Um <laughs> oh, why couldn't it be night? We would be in such good shape if it was night, or they didn't hit uh, multiple rangers classes. Ugh. Oh no, my bones, my tiny fragile bones. Um, chains of blizzard brawls too, pretty awkward. So we can't win with an attack there. We can chump block. Hmm. Is that... Uh, that is three Blizzard Brawls. Okay, yeah, Mono Green having the... Oops, drew all my Doom Blades game. So we don't get the win there. 
Uh, good game to her opponent. Whew, okay, pretty decent hand. Um, Kamano... Uh, like, we would be happier if the Ray of Enfeeblement was a two-drop. But... Uh, and, and our man... <laughs> listen, listen, the hand has some issues, but it's not... Not quite bad enough to mulligan, basically. Uh, we do the tap land on one, so we can play out the Kamano, hold up a Ray of Enfeeblement. Ooh, Boris again? Maybe, maybe? Would love for the Ray of Enfeeblement to be live. Um... Jeskai, ooh, things get worse. Let's fire off Arnie Broken Brow, see what we can do. I'm hoping for no counter spell at least. No no make disappear. Does seem like they're sitting on some removal or other kind of interaction, but no. Arnie connects. I wonder if this is maybe a Magecraft and or no, just Jeskai Hinata. Okay. Um this is a slow start from them, which is good, although if the game goes long, that could be quite bad for us. But they're tapped out this turn too, which is great. Um just gonna fire off the Stormseeker here and the Kamano faces Kakazan. Try to connect for as much damage as possible, basically. Doot doot doot. Opponent to five. Uh, ee, ooh. Do we just get them? I'm hoping we just get them. Fable of the Mirror Breaker, sure. Uh, and it seems like they probably have, yeah, removal for the etching. But we do have a play with fire. Um, and we can connect for lethal. Huh, <sighs> good games to the opponent. Um, I think I'm just gonna end the video there. Thank you for watching. Um, ch sorry, my brain just like blanked as I was remembering like, oh right, this is on someone else's channel. Uh, check out my channel, link in the description below probably, Symphonier's Gaming. Um, I hope you enjoyed this, this weird, weird, I say weird, this is weird for me. I'm, I'm not used to doing stuff on other folks' channels, but... God, I'm just rambling now. Thank you. Bye-bye.